Kubernetes, everyone's talking about it, right? It doesn't matter if you're using a business project or if you're home labbing, it seems like everyone has a use case regardless of what you're doing or where you're at. Now, the barrier to entry of Kubernetes can be overwhelming. And in this video, I want to explain to you how you can kind of get started in the simplest way possible, right? So what I'm going to assume in this video is that you either have limited Kubernetes experience or you have a lot of Kubernetes experience. The idea here is that you can just hit the ground running. So what we're looking at here is my Portainer instance. And if you haven't seen my video on Portainer, I'll have a link in the description below on the video that I've done previously, as well as some documentation so you can get started as well. This will give us a UI so we can interact with our Kubernetes environment environment this makes it really easy for us just to start learning kubernetes start deploying our first applications and just getting a feel for how everything works without being overwhelmed by that command line so if you're keen to learn kubernetes or if you're keen to see how portainer works with kubernetes there's two sort of use cases here i'll walk you through the entire thing so what we're going to do is i'm going to set up a brand new ubuntu server from scratch and we're going to install what's called microcates now microcates is like a really quick and easy way to get started with kubernetes it's made by canonical and it's maintained by canonical which are the creators of Ubuntu right so we're going to get that all up and running and then once that's all up and running I'm going to show you how easy it is to integrate it into Portainer and then I'll show you how we can then just deploy an application right and then you can just get an understanding on the the basics of Kubernetes and then start to go deeper as well because you can do all of that within the Portainer UI you can also jump into the Kubernetes shell as well which is here so you can actually get into that low level start interacting with it there as well as you learn more but this is just a great place to start if you're keen to understand Kubernetes and just get an understanding on how it all works so if you're wanting to follow along look you can have a virtual machine you can have a Raspberry Pi or whatever right as long as you're running Ubuntu server you can follow this process it's pretty straightforward so I'm in my Proxmox which is just an environment where I can create virtual machines and I've just created a VM called Kate Sandbox so I'm going to start this and then I can just jump into a console and I'm starting from scratch right like we're going to install Ubuntu server from scratch I'm going to walk you through the entire process and I'll show you you know start to finish of us getting this Ubuntu server set up installing micro kates and showing you how we can bring it into portainer and then how we can deploy an application and you are essentially up and running with kubernetes and just getting a feel for how everything works now i'm making this video again you don't have to be an expert at kubernetes i myself am no expert at kubernetes i am still learning a lot of fundamental stuff i use it a fair bit then i don't use it and then i forget about it and i forget how certain things work right now the idea with this is being able to bring it into Portainer using the UI, it just takes a lot of that stress and that overwhelming feeling of trying to, you know, get started with Kubernetes. And it just allows us to start deploying applications, start understanding how things work, right? And that's the idea with this video. Uh, you could be an expert, you could be a beginner. This video is for you. And ideally, if you follow along with these steps, you will have a Kubernetes node up and running that you can deploy applications to. So let's continue setting up our Ubuntu server. So I'm going to select English. Seems my window is too big i'll just come down here uh we'll update the installer it's always best to run the latest installer so we'll let that quickly install there we go so now we'll just choose our keyboard again my size my screen size is a bit big but that's fine we're going to install ubuntu server just the top one is fine a lot of the stuff we can leave as default the key thing here is to understand the ip address so this one is 137 so we'll keep uh, a note of that so 137 i don't have a proxy so i can just hit enter now this will just do a network test to make sure you can actually hit the Ubuntu mirrors so we can actually download our packages, which is, you know, the software. So you can see it's passed, so we can hit enter. And again, we're just doing a sandbox sort of machine here. We don't need to overthink this process. We can just use the entire disk for the install and we can just go down to done and we'll hit enter. Again, we're happy. We're just gonna leave things as default. We don't need to overthink this. We're gonna hit continue. We'll give it a name. So I'm just going to call this tech docs, choose a strong password, and we'll hit done. And we don't want Ubuntu Pro, so we're just going to skip for now. The cool thing about this one here is that if you have your um, SSH keys and like something like GitHub, you can easily import them so we can SSH to it uh, without any problems, which is what I'm going to do. So I'm going to import the SSH key, grab them from my GitHub, put my GitHub username in there, hit done. It's going to grab those SSH keys add them to the server so I can use my private key to SSH straight away, which is pretty sweet, makes it nice and efficient. Now, the cool thing here is that we can choose the micro cates right from uh, the install. So we're gonna say, hey, look, when you install our virtual machine, chuck micro cates on there for us, right? And we can go done. 
and now it's just going to start doing the install so we can just leave this now to finish the install and once our virtual machine is all up and running we can connect back to it again then we can get it ready to install what's called the Portainer agent on it so our server can talk back to Portainer and then we can just deploy applications to Kubernetes. It's really that easy to get started when we're using something like Portainer in this case. Now, while that's installing, another key point is for this video is that what I'm trying to show you is just we don't need to overcomplicate things when we're trying to learn something new, right? Or if we're just trying to wrap our head around a new idea, like something like Kubernetes, we can just go down a simple route, right? There's a simple way to install Kubernetes. We don't need to do it from scratch, right? Using microcates. Now, the command line and everything and learning the how to actually deploy services via the command line for Kubernetes can be overwhelming at first. Now, this is something I still would encourage you to learn. It's very good knowledge, but being able to put Portainer UI on top of our Kubernetes cluster, well, for our way to interact with our Kubernetes cluster, again, just makes that overwhelming level a lot lower. It makes us so we, that barrier of entry is a lot easier to get into, right? And we can actually deploy an application and just learn how Kubernetes works and how, you know, how a YAML manifest for Kubernetes works. And you just start asking yourself questions on how these things actually happen, right? That's the idea for this video is just, I want to show you how you can get started in the simplest way possible. And then you're still going to have a lot of questions, but at least you know what sort of questions to ask by the end of this video, if that makes sense. You're not in some like spiraling pit. You're, you're actually in a position where you can start to play around. Now, why our virtual machine is still setting itself up, what I want to show you is, look, we are setting up a virtual machine from scratch, right? And we're installing microcates for us. But let's say you had, you wanted to set up an actual cluster and stuff like that. Another cool feature of Portainer where I will leave a actual video that showcases the step by step in the description. But if we wanted to add a new Kubernetes environment to Portainer, what we could do is click add environment. And you can actually get it to create a Kubernetes cluster for you. Like, you know how we're setting up microcates now using the, the snap package that we selected on the installer. If we already had a Ubuntu server all set up there, um, you know, running, but it didn't have microcates, but we had a Ubuntu server, we could hit start wizard and we could select microcates, right? And we could point uh, Portainer to our Ubuntu servers. So we could have, you know, one IP address here for our main um control plane or our master node and then would have our worker nodes right which you know if you wanted more uh nodes in your kubernetes cluster add the ip addresses here portainer will go out and configure all of that for you as well so i'm not going to go into details here because there is a detailed video and again that will be in the description so if that's something you're just interested in to understand how that works check that out Right, so the install for the Ubuntu server is done. Now, I'm not even kidding you. The install for this takes a lot longer than just deploying our first app. <laughs> so we can reboot now, and this will reboot the virtual machine. We'll have to pull the ISO out so it doesn't keep trying to do a reinstall. There we go, so now it's booting up. And remember how I already used my keys, so I should be able to just SSH straight to this. So now the install's done, what we can do, and since our keys are in, and everything are already on the server, we should be able to go SSH, tech docs, and it was 137, and if I hit enter, and we'll go yes because it's a new connection bam we're in that virtual machine right so now the cool thing is we should now have micro kates on here so micro kates hit enter and there we go so we can see that we have a few things so if you followed this through if you are following along you now already have a kubernetes node up and running right it's just a single node but this is perfect for just us testing and playing around so what we need to do though is there's these things called add-ons and they just add some core functionality that we need for our Kubernetes environment. Now, this is pretty much the only thing we're really going to need to, to do at the command line level for us to get it to work with Portainer. What we're going to need is to enable a load balancer, right? And this is what Portainer is going to use to when we install what's called the Portainer agent in our cluster. It's going to expose that node so then that Portainer server can find it. Now, if this is a bit confusing, it's okay. Um, I'm going to walk you through it. So microcates makes edit, um, enabling this load balancer really easy. So all we need to do is do microcates enable metal LB. So this is just a load balancer uh, that the local node is going to use. So we'll hit enter. And if you get this error here, it just means that we need to add our user to the microcates group. So we can do that. And then we do new group microcates, which means it just does a new session so that our session knows that our TikToks user is now in that group. So now our TikToks user should be in that group. So now we can continue to add that metal LB like I was showing you before. So if we run that command again now, 
this will enable it and now it's asking us for an ip range that it can give out to as load balancer now what we need to do here is give metal lb which is the load balancer a range that it can give out so these are the ip addresses that it will use to expose your services for you right now if you're going to plan on exposing a few things via the load balancer now you're going to need to give it a fair few ip addresses but in this case i'm just going to give it a few because this is just a sandbox of me playing around the key thing to note here though is that you most likely have dhcp on your router right so your router is just giving out ip addresses to whoever joins your network so what we need to do is first off give this a range that we know is probably not in use so like a high end range and then also make sure we go into our router and tell it to reserve that range so it's not going to give it out because otherwise you're going to have some network conflicts right you you're your load balancer could be using an IP ad address or expecting to use an IP address because it's in that range. And then if it's not reserved, your router is going to give that out and then you're going to have network conflicts. It's a sandbox environment, so it's not going to be mission, mission critical or break anything uh, important, but that's something you need to do, right? Otherwise, you're going to have those conflicts. So for example, I'm going to do 192.168.68.211. So that's the first range up until... 192.168.68.215 I'm only going to give it a very select few IP addresses so I, there's not a lot I can expose on different IP addresses but this is going to be enough for me to play around with a sandbox and just deploy my first application so I'm going to hit enter here a lot of text came up don't let it intimidate you it's now just configured that add-on so there's a load balancer now for our um, Kubernetes environment and again, I'm just getting you with the bare bones essential to get this into Portainer. We can now jump over to our Portainer environment. What we can do now is go into our environments, right? We can add an environment. We don't need to create a cluster because we already have one now, right? So we can just click Kubernetes, hit start wizard, and we're just going to use a standard agent. And you can see that there's two ways to deploy it, right? Our agent. We can do the Kubernetes via our load balancer or via the node port. Now you can just do node port if you don't want to configure up a load balancer, but it's fun to play around and learn how load balancers work and stuff like that. So we're going to deploy our first application, which is a Portana agent via uh, the load balancer that we just enabled. So we're going to copy this command and we're going to jump back over to our Kubernetes cluster, which is here. And we'll just paste that command in. And what this is going to do is it's going to reach out and grab the Portainer agent's YAML file that has all the instructions to build the Portainer agent. If you're familiar with things like Docker Compose, similar sort of idea. It's just a YAML manifest with all the build instructions. So we'll hit enter. I did this on purpose. You'll see that how it's coming up. Hey, look, you don't have kubectl enabled. No, we're going to have to put micro case in front of this because, yes, we have... Uh, Kubernetes installed, but we're using micro Kates instead. So we'll do micro Kates space and we'll hit enter and now it will deploy it. And there we go. So now our first service has been deployed and it's a Portana agent. So now that our application has been deployed, right? We just ran that and it deployed the application. Now, what we need to do is if we go over to Portana, right? So now that we've run this, right? So what we need to do now is actually just give it a name. So I will just do YouTube uh kate's sandbox and now we need to give it an environment address now this isn't the address of the node because we're using a load balancer now if you remember so what we need to do is we just need to run one command and we just need to grab the address that our kubernetes node is now using to expose that agent now i know this might all sound confusing but just follow along all we need to do is just figure out what ip address and port it's exposing and we just help Portana connect to that. That's the only thing we need to do to get it connected. So what we'll do is we'll run this command. So we're saying, hey, look, microcates, run kubectl, which is the way that we interact with our Kubernetes cluster, get the services under a namespace Portana. Now, namespaces at a very high level in Kubernetes is a way for us to organize our deployments under you know, a certain name, which is Portana, so we know everything that's been deployed under the namespace Portana is related to Portana in some way. And then you can do cool things around that. As you learn Kubernetes more, you'll understand it a bit more. So we'll hit enter. And we can see that we have our agent in that namespace. And we can see that it's based, it's exposed on that load balancer. And we can connect to our environment using the port 9001 on this IP address. So we'll do 9001 and we'll hit connect. And there we go. It's connected to 
that service that's been exposed by our load balancer on that port 9001, right? So now, if we come to our Portainer environment, we can see it at the bottom. Here we go. Here's our new Kubernetes environment, right? We can click into it, and we can see the applications that are running. We can see that it's got that middle LB. We deployed that, you deployed that load balancer that's running on there. If we come into namespaces, we can see that Portainer namespace. So if we click into it, we can see the agent in there. Now, if you don't see this because it's marked as a system namespace, if you click on these little three dots in the corner, you can go show system resources, right? And that will show you all of the namespaces. Right, now that you have your cluster all added to Portainer, you can see it here now and we can interact with it. What I'm going to do now is show you how we can deploy an application. So I, since I've got a bit of an overlap and everything going on with this cluster, I'm just going to go back to my original one. Now this was set up exactly the same. Okay. So we're picking up exactly where we left off. So I'm going to click on this one here and go into my original one. And if we go to applications, you can see that I have deployed an example Nginx demo. I'm going to remove this and I'm going to start from scratch and show you how this looks like for just deploying an app. So we're going to hit create from file. We're going to go web editor and you get to paste in your YAML. Um, like if you've used Docker Compose and stuff, Kubernetes uses manifest, which is just the build instructions of exactly what, what you want to build. So I have one already copied from, I just asked ChatGPT to make it for me. I would recommend just doing the same or finding some online. And I'll just quickly run through what I have. So we're going to create a namespace. Like I said, it's always good to break things out via a namespace. So we're going to call this Nginx Web. So that's what we're going to use is Nginx Web. And we've got the deployment there, which is our Nginx uh, server. And we have some content for our website, which is just really basic. And then it's going to be deployed on our load balancer, which we have, right? So the cool thing here is we can tell Portainer, don't worry about us having to define a namespace. We already have one defined in our YAML. So we can click that and we can just give this a name. So I'm just going to call this Nginx Kates. Perfect. Come down here and we'll hit deploy. And now this is going to deploy that service for us. So we can see it's there and it's deployed. We can see it says replicated zero out of one because it's still deploying. But we can see it's actually deployed now and it's all up and running. And we can see now the external IP, right? It's already configured. It's apparently already deployed. So if I click this, hopefully we've deployed our Kubernetes application. That's our web server and we should get it. And there we go. We click it. We've deployed our first web service in Kubernetes just like that, right? So welcome to your micro Kate's Nginx website. It's gone a bit weird here because it was using an emoji, <laughs> which isn't supported, it looks like. But that is deploying our application on Kubernetes. Now, I know there was a bit there, but now you're in a position to start asking questions, to start go back. How did that work? Why did that work? How was this working? And now you can start the tinker and you're in a position to have a Kubernetes node set up that you can tinker with, right? The idea here isn't the setting up a production node or anything like this. This is just to get you started the fastest way possible to start playing around with Kubernetes and lowering that barrier of entry a bit, right? Use the Portainer dashboard, get a feel for how things are working and get a feel for, you know, what you can do, how can you interact with it? And, you know, you're not overwhelmed by that command line now. We're using a nice UI to be able to interact with our Kubernetes node. Now, I'm going to have links in the description below. So, you know, all the documentation for getting started with Portainer. I'm also using the Portainer business. Now, you can get uh, three nodes for free. So, I will have a link in the description below. So, again, if you're just going to have one node for running Portainer server and then one node for adding your Kubernetes cluster, you're only using two nodes. So, you can use the Portainer business, have the full fleet of features, um, and it's all free. Uh, so I would recommend that. Otherwise, there's the community edition as well. So I'll leave all the links in the description below so you can get started with getting Portainer server set up. Have a play around with Kubernetes. Let me know how you get on. Uh, jump to my Discord. The link will be in the description below. So have a feel. See how you go. If you get stuck, ask me any questions. I'm more than happy to help. But hopefully this helps you get started with just getting your feet wet with Kubernetes, right? And get just getting an understanding on how everything works. Thank you so much for watching and I will see you in the next video. Goodbye.